thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Max Miel. I work for the Free Software Foundation Europe, the FSFE. We are a charity that empowers users to control technology. And today I would like to talk with you about uh, one of our projects called Reuse. Uh, this is a nice project aimed towards developers, but also people reusing software code and uh, how we can make that easier. But before getting started right into the topic, I would like to ask you for some honesty. So I have uh, three simple questions. So if it applies to you, please raise your hand. The first question is, who of you has ever programmed some software code? May it be a shell script or a sophisticated program? Okay, I see 95% of the hands up. Perhaps the last 5% are either sleeping or never, really never touched software code. But this is fine as well, don't leave the room. It might be interesting to you as well what I'm talking about. Second question is, who has ever released some software code, so released it as free software? Okay, numbers drop not significantly, 80%. That's awesome. Folks, you're awesome. You're providing code, your, your creativity as free software to other people. You spread the four freedoms and enable people to control technology. That's awesome. But now the last question before we get started. Who has never been confused by how to probably license their free software code? It's never. One, two, three. Wow, guys, either you really blatantly lie to me <laughs> or you're geniuses, really. <laughs> Congrats. Okay, next genius. Um, so this is a problem, right? We have four people in this room roughly 5% who probably know how to do free software licensing, we should change that. Um, so there are some common uncertainties when doing free software licensing, right? So the most easiest question is where do I put the information about my chosen license? So you do free software, you release that, and you think about which license should it have, like which, under which conditions can users use and reuse your software, because that's your freedom to decide that. But where to put that? In the README file? In some licensed text somewhere in the repo? Um, do you have to edit every file? Or do you have to call Richard Stallman to ask him? No, well, that, that's a problem, right? We don't know, or many people don't know. And what do I do when I have multiple licenses in my project? So this could well be if you your code is under a GPL license, well, under which license you can decide, but you have some documentation, for instance, which is, should be under like a documentation license and the text license like Creative Commons. So you have now two licenses. Where to put this information? Two license files in your repo? That's, that's complicated. Then, very important, how can we make sure that reusers are aware of the license that we've chosen? So you said, I want to have a copyleft license, or I don't want to have a copyleft license. How can you inform reusers, so other free software projects, individual users, but also big corporations, about your choice? How can you do that? Like how to make them really aware of what you think about your conditions for reuse? And well, last but not least, Free software is great because we can build on top of what others have solved. So we have an issue, a problem, another guy, another girl on the internet solved that issue. You want to take the code and reuse it in your own program to make a shortcut. That's great. Free software enables you to do that. But how to find out which conditions, which license the other person chose? So now you have to crawl through the repository, the readme file, or you have to trust something like github.com and the license indicator on top, and that's, that's, that's not really cool. I mean, that, that's work, and free software programming should be fun. So we thought we really have to make licensing and copyright easier for everyone. So we have to find easy solutions because the solutions out there are not really solving the problem. And we came up with some, something called reuse. Reuse is supposed to help you, free software developers and free software reusers. Our idea is to solve this problem at the very source. 
So we don't store information about our copyright and our licensing choice somewhere else, but as close as possible to the source files. So the idea is that it's really hard to ignore your licensing choice and your copyright information. So what we did is to came up, come up with best practices for free software developers to make this licensing easy and transparent for everyone. So easy for developers, easy for reusers. And as I said, the idea is to store this information as close as possible to the source, so ideally at every file. So, sorry, um, so in, you would have in each source code file a license header or something like that, or something where, where it's really easy to find this licensing and copyright information. And so the steps to reach this goal are quite simple. There are three steps. The first is choose and provide licenses. So you should, as a free software developer, make a conscious decision about which license to choose and store this in a dedicated place, like the full license text inside of your repo. The second part is to add copyright and licensing information to every file. So either add a comment header to every source code file, or if that's not possible, like for binary files, like pictures, or like other edge cases, we also provide some other alternatives to do that. The idea is, again, as close as possible, as transparent as possible. And the last step is to conf confirm reuse compliance. That's quite simple. We have a reuse helper tool, uh, which can check your repository, and you can verify whether you have this information available for every file. If that's done, you get a big fat smiley and you're done for this. So this is one example um, how this may, could look like. This is a comment header which could, could, you could store in, in, in the file and it just has two lines, basically the SPDX license identifier. So that's a unique identifier for the license you've chosen. So that's really clear. And the second is a copyright. Who is the copyright holder of the file? And this is also very important information. That's the most important information you need to give out and if you release free software. So this sounds quite theoretical. Uh, we made it practical. We have the set helper tool which enables you or helps you in becoming Reels compliant. So this doesn't only check whether you're Reels compliant but also give a tool to initialize your repository, uh, to download the license text so you don't have to find them in, in the internet from different sources. And um, it also helps you in adding these licensing and copyright information to the uh, header, to the header or also, um, of the files or also the uh, alternative solutions. So this by that becomes really simple. And the tool is easy to install and you can find it online. It's free software, of course. But we also work on the like, learning side. So we have a tutorial that will get you started. So you will go through an example repository and you will just learn how to make this Reels compliant and in order to help you to understand the principles of reuse. We also have an FAQ. This is not only for the reuse tool and the reuse uh, best practices, but also for basic licensing questions. Like for instance, what is copyright? How does licensing work? Do I have to put something like the year in my copyright statement or something like that? So really sim simple things. And to be honest, one year ago, or two years ago, before I really started to get into this reuse project, I also didn't have much clue about it. But like this FAQ and the whole combination of the tutorial and the simple guidelines really also helped me to understand copyright and licensing and to make this easier. Uh, so if I have a free software project, now it's really simple. We have the best practices, of course. So this is not only nice words on some website, but we have a formal specification of reuse. So the idea is that it, this is not a small movement, but that we can make this a standard for every free software project out there. So there's a formal specification for source forges, for uh, companies, also for projects that you can follow and that we constantly develop if we see need for that. And last but not least, we have something like a reuse as a service. So we call this the reuse API. By this, you can quickly register your project, your free software project. Uh, so it's any Git repository, no matter whether it's on 
uh, GitHub, GitLab, or some other independent Git uh, platform. You can register your project. You can see whether it's already reuse compliant. Well, it probably won't, but it will create a dynamic batch that you can include in your readme file so people can see that you're reuse compliant and see the result of the reuse check already. So this is dynamic. If you came to the point that it's reuse compliant, uh, you will always see that. If you're not reuse compliant, it will also show that this is not the case. So this is really transparent and really easy to start with. Um, so speaking about easy to start with, who's already using reuse? So obviously we started with our own projects and worked quite well, so the FSFE's uh, repos. But a really cool thing is that there's the Next Generation Internet Project. This is a, a big project by the European Commission where they fund 120 or over 120 projects, software projects, that make the internet or should make the internet um, safer, more secure and privacy friendly. So we have 120 free software projects that are reuse compliant, funded with public money. So this is a really great thing and this will speed up the whole thing. But we also have, and this is really great to know, the Linux kernel. This is right now 60 to 70 percent reuse compliant already. So they have added the copyright information and added the license identifiers already to 60 to 70 percent of their files. And this is great uh, when you know that the Linux kernel has <laughs> such a long history and so many confusing like copyright statements with changing companies and stuff that it's really complicated to clean that up, but the Linux kernel is already quite far. And so we hope to help with these guys to finish this, this up very soon. We also know about some multinational corporations who are already using reuse and make this a best practice for their developers, for their free software projects. And so one question remains, is your project already reuse compliant? Probably not, but you should do that. So go to reuse.software and make your free software project reuse compliant. And by that, secure your intentions, how you want to have your code handled by other parties, by your users. So if you want to contribute, uh, of course, everything is free software and quite transparent. So we look forward to your bug reports if you try it out. We look forward to pull requests um, also to the website, also to the specification. Everything is transparent. Uh, so please help us in becoming better and make it easier for everyone. You can work on this and on many other projects if you become an FSME intern. So we just opened up a few positions so no matter which background, whether social science, technical, legal, we have many cool projects and among them is also the reuse project. So check out fsfebus.org. And of course, spread the word. Try it out. If you like it, tell your friends, tell your colleagues, tell your free software projects, tell your boss in, the, in your company. That would be great. We need that because reuse is only mighty, becomes only mighty and useful for many people if as many projects as possible we become reuse compliant and thereby make copyright and licensing easy, fun and simple again. So I would like to thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, go to reuse.software or just approach me after the talk or ask some question now. Thank you. Any questions? Does distributing the license across all the files not make it a bit more difficult as well to find where should I be looking for the, file, the license that will apply to my reuse of this code? So if you have 20 different files, potentially with different licenses, you have to go and check all of them. Yeah, sure, but the idea is that you, I mean, it doesn't matter whether you have only one license or 20 licenses over 20 files. You can also dual license files. But it's important that if you do that, like for instance, you use from a third party a certain library then this might have a different license. So it's important that people reusing then from your code, which you are the, in which you also reused other uh, com, uh, components, that it's quite simple to see, ideally at the top of the file, under which license from which copyright holder this file is. So of course, it, it might be complicated, but that's free software licensing. But we should make that more transparent, and that's just the idea of, of reuse. Any more questions? Other, other questions?
there could also be different licenses within a file, right? Like uh, Stack Overflow has, uh, you know, you can copy code from there uh, as long as it's tributed or things like that. Does the reuse handle any of that? Unfortunately not, but that's a really cool question that we also want to work on. Um, the idea that we had is to have something like a uh, here begins code under this copyright and this license and here it ends. Uh, that would be great. Like right now, the reuse tool, at least, um, you could do that already, but the reuse tool doesn't really detect whether a license is split in multiple sn snippets, for instance. Um, you could do that manually somehow, but the tool would, will search for this SPDX license identifier and for a copyright statement already. So it would at least carry the information that there are multiple licenses in, in this file somehow. But it's not like really easy yet. But uh, we can figure that out. I think there's already an open uh, issue for that. So if someone has a really cool, cool idea, please, uh, please help us. That would be great. OK, thank you very much. That's all the time we have for questions. Thank you.